critical skills such as inclusiveness tolerance and kind of a non violent way of approaching a difference of opinion which is much needed in the world today so these skills get built over time with the sport of ultimate and because the game is self referee the game is designed in such a way that there is the spirit of the game or the sotg is kept paramount Isn't that just powerful? That's Ben and Stephen. He's the co-founder of Vi Ultimate. They are a registered not-for-profit organization that's developing social and emotional learning in children and young adults through the sport of Ultimate Frisbee. Vi Ultimate is a young organization in the Indian sports development sector. They coach and mentor kids from economically underprivileged backgrounds in the sport of Ultimate Frisbee. Now we all know the unparalleled contribution that sports makes towards human development. It promotes good health, fosters team spirit, and also eases social interaction. On one end we have the Indian cricket team with billions of loyal fans, and on the flip side we have children dropping out of school due to basic development challenges. Now we are here to talk about all the good work that's being done by young social purpose organizations. such as Vi Ultimate they are taking matters into their own hands and employing sports as a tool to harness its positive potential so let's hear more i got introduced to the sport of ultimate frisbee and the community that plays ultimate in delhi in late 2015 it was during my final year of college i went to play with the delhi ultimate community at a public park in gk greater kailash and i met these uh, kids and these kids were from Zamrudpur a small village in GK and i was really inspired by the effort the children from this village was putting in um, they wanted to get better at the game and we were four players who basically met on the field and we were wondering how can we support uh, these children and so we started spending more time with these children on field and then slowly it moved to off field routines we started tuition and academic support with the help of the delhi ultimate player community and then we started training them uh, and raising funds through different avenues to support them to go for various domestic tournaments across india that sounds amazing so when you talk about vi ultimate and the journey it has been on so far who would you say are the heroes without whom the organization would probably not function the way it functions right now and what has their contribution been to your mission yeah i think everybody who has been part of our journey are our heroes like there is no segregation because at the end of the day this is a team sport and the organization is also a team is also run by a team and without one of them there is no opportunity for someone to be even perceived as a hero there is always somebody who is assisting you uh, in some form or other so if you ask me who are our heroes i would say um, the children who are part of our program the youth coaches who go and uh, work on ground and help reach out to more children the schools organization communities the representatives from these places who have believed in the potential of ultimate frisbee and basically given us a chance to execute our model um, all the donors who have enabled us to continue our work there are a lot of friends family and some amazing humans who we did not even know before who have come forward and supported and promoted us there are people who have stepped in to put in time effort and resources over their full time jobs and all these people i i could be missing out on certain people as well all these people are uh, what make why ultimate what it is today and they are all a hero according to me yeah that sounds great and i love the fact that you said you can't really name one because you are focusing on team sports and that's how all of you come together to um create and deliver the impact when benoy was telling me about all these wonderful skills that the children are learning on the field and practicing off the field as well I was curious to visualize it you know put mental frames to what we were talking about and that brought me to the youtube page where i saw the children dancing after a practice 
going for their morning sprints at 6 a.m. Really coming together as a team of young boys and girls just sharing values of respect, tolerance, feedback. That was really inspiring to see. Speaking of impact, I know you mentioned that you are working with children and you're helping them develop social and emotional skills. Could you talk a little bit more about how you're creating and delivering impact and apart from the children who else is being impacted sure so i'll just walk you through the whole cycle of change that we work with right it it uh-huh. starts with a very basic thing which is you starting with practicing the sport of ultimate so the sport of ultimate is a sport which has quite a bit of movement running around um and decision making to be made and this kind of builds your physical fitness and given your playing with others and it's not a solo sport it's a team sport and that kind of facilitates an interaction with other humans and that develops social and emotional skills for these children and when you practice in such a space um, and you develop such skills there are more chances of your interest and success rate in school to increase and once you practice ultimate frisbee the next step is you going as a team and playing competitively like you just playing against another team and when you go play against another team uh, the process is very simple you basically have to apply the learnings that you have developed over your training period and when you apply the learnings and at the end of each game ultimate has this beautiful concept called spirit circle where both teams sit together uh, at the end of a game they reflect on what went well what could have been better they give feedback to each other and they move ahead so this kind of space helps children interact with each other and also build a network this network leads to building awareness of opportunities and kind of influences the aspirations uh, that each child has because everybody comes from a different background uh, if you look at it from a game point of view the consequence of a game is a simple win or lose but whatever it be whatever the consequence be of a game there are always learnings that you can take back and this learning is facilitated through the reflection which is part of the spirit circle and after after a match you kind of reflect on your learnings and you practice more and that is a point where you usually go out and recruit more people and more peers so that they help you become better and you in turn become a peer leader of some sort and over time this could lead to a source of income so what we have been doing is over the last 5 years we have been working with one community in delhi in different varied capacity and in this community we have built a team together the team's name is gk man and today they are one of the top teams in the country and the senior players of this team youth coaches get a stipend which helps them to be financially independent um, to a certain extent as well as build skills which are much needed wherever they go in their lives because this comes like a work opportunity where you learn the skills of how do you be responsible how do you uh, manage any kind of conflict how do you manage a team of your own you are no longer a person who is a player you have to manage a whole different thing so all these skills kind of help the youth coaches uh develop their own personal skills and their own social and emotional skills i love that i love the fact that you have a spirit circle i love that you're also empowering them to start thinking about what they could do and how they could manage a team and that's something that i believe children and kids need to be taught even beyond their classroom learnings because that's something that gets missed out when they are in just within the four walls of the classroom so that's amazing so now that you've given us uh, an idea of the impact could you talk a little bit about the wins that you've celebrated over the years and probably a specific example a win that you think about and it just brings a smile to your face and something you want to tell everyone as you meet them there are a couple of wins that 
have been helping us to move forward so uh, the sport of ultimate frisbee is a self refereed sport which means there is no third person who is going to tell you whether something is right or wrong it is the players themselves who know the rules and administer those rules uh, secondly the sport is a non contact sport any kind of contact may be a foul and it can be administered by the player the foul can be called by the players and resolved accordingly and thirdly this sport is widely played in a mixed gender format in india at this moment so all these three things together makes it like a great tool to bring children together to learn how gender equity could look like what is conflict resolution looking like how do you just agree to disagree how do you uh, peacefully communicate your perspective and lot of these critical skills such as inclusiveness tolerance and kind of a non violent way of approaching a difference of opinion which is much needed in the world today so these skills get built over time with the sport of ultimate and because the game is self referee the game is designed in such a way that there is the spirit of the game or the sotg is kept paramount uh, so even if you go to world championship you will see that you will announce the runners up the winners of the tournament and finally they announce the spirit award which is the most coveted award at a tournament uh, and what this award means is that was the team which exhibited the best spirit in tournament so and that is not a qualitative measure but more of a quantitative measurement that happens behind this after every game you each team rates the other team on uh, how spirited they were and that there is a five point metric uh, where you measure what was the team spirit based on how much rules do they know how well they were avoiding fouls and body contact were they communicating respectfully did they have a positive attitude on the field were they fair minded so So these five questions are addressed on a scale of zero to four, and that score is accumulated at the end of it, and accordingly, a spirit award winner is declared. So last year, 2019 to 20 uh, season that we played, we played four tournaments out of which we won the first two. the third one we finished second and the fourth we finished third position and across these four tournaments in three tournaments we won the spirit of the game award and that is something which is not usually common because once you get competitive and go higher up in the ladder there is there are moments where your spirit may drop because you're that competitive team and it really means a lot to me because i appreciate the sport and the uh structures and ethos that the sport upholds how the team is pushing themselves to be competitive but not at the cost of uh, how spirited they are and that is a very big win for me and off the field there are few things that have helped us to move forward which is last year all the children who graduated from 12th grade at our core team uh, at gk mad all five of them are continuing their education today through college and we had children who were dropouts and the children on their own have stepped up and decided to get themselves enrolled in nios because they have seen you know they have seen different people and opportunities that comes along that come along with better education and how important it is and rather than somebody asking them to pass an exam or finish school when that drive comes from within that i want to do this that is something that is a win i would say when you yourself want to take the learnings on field like five years back you were that team that was four feet tall and you lost everything every match you played from there you have put in so much effort over time and you have become better and take you are t- trying to take this principle back to your life that if you can put in the hard work and effort in some place that is going to reward you sometime probably now or sometime in the future and that effort is something i would say is a big win 
and uh, yeah i think finally is one of the byproducts of our whole program is three of our girl players got selected to the indian under 20 team that was to that was going to represent india at the world championship in sweden in 2020 but due to covid the tournament got called off but that kind of exposure and them getting selected to be part of india's top 20 female athletes this point is something that gives me a lot of joy as well that gives me a lot of joy too i'm so happy to hear that because not every day you hear something like that that's definitely something to be proud of and i just wish they were able to make it but yeah hoping that they do next year thanks for sharing that if you had to look back and reflect on the wins that you mentioned uh, which i'm happy to hear there have been many what have your biggest learnings been and just some observations that you made and that have helped you do better with the team or children have learned something out of these wins yeah peer leadership is a very powerful tool and it can it can do wonders if managed and mentored well because that is the way we can reach out to more children rather than looking at that we will go and facilitate multiple communities instead can we see how can we reach out through other channels and this has been a great learning for me because this really helps us to scale sustainably because the moment you know if everything is dependent on one particular person that gets a little tricky so having a pool of people to work on it as peers helps a lot and uh, another learning for me has been uh, something which was hard for me which is i i absolutely love the sport of ultimate and when somebody would probably say no this this is not something that is interesting me uh, i used to be hurt but then like understanding at the end of the day ultimate is a sport and every sport could have people who back it and people who don't and being okay with it kind of really helps then yeah the third learning for me would be the power of choices rather than rather than uh enforcing something on somebody that you have to do this instead of that just informing the player and the people that we work with saying these are the choices and whatever choice you make there are consequences that come with it both it could be positive or negative or however you want to frame it but whatever action you do you have to be responsible for the consequence and response that that action will kind of create it is so nice to hear that you have started thinking about or you and your team have been thinking about sustainable scaling and because that's not that's not a concept that occurs to an organization which is as young as yours so that's really good to hear looking ahead what do you envision for why ultimate what are you hopeful for so going forward what i envision for why ultimate is to continue creating these ripple effects so the one community in zamrutpur that started 5 years back is today supporting many more communities across delhi today and similarly the communities that these youth coaches are reaching out today can help build more peer coaches down the line who would then be able to reach out to many more children and that kind of ripple effect is something that i dream of because that will create a network of peer leaders working to impart social and emotional learning in children and especially those from lesser privileged socio economic backgrounds uh, through the sport of ultimate frisbee and what i am hopeful for is to see schools take up ultimate as part of their curriculum and focus more on social and emotional learning with delhi's happiness curriculum and the focus on uh, social and emotional learning in the new education policy these things kind of suggest that things are slowly shifting to that direction and that gives me hope amazing i hope the same i hope for the same because sports is so critical in a child's holistic development and i just hope to see more of that being implemented in the schools in india be it your government or private school so yeah All right so we come to our what if question i like asking this question to stimulate everyone's thinking about what if we could have a million listeners and they are encouraged to learn about your work where 
or how would you recommend they start sure first of all if you are one of those listeners who have reached till here thank you for listening and yeah you you can follow us on uh, facebook and instagram they are our active social media channels right now and you shall get regular updates there we are also working on our website right now and you can check us out at yultimate.org and once covid eases up and we resume practice we do welcome each one of you to just come visit us and see us on the field and even play with us this is a question that has helped me in the times where i was uncertain or times when i needed someone to come and tell me or show me the beautiful life that we have and i want to include this question in the show also probably inspire a lot of our listeners to ask this question to themselves and that is what are you grateful for today it doesn't have to be just today it could be in general but what are you grateful for i think i'll just start with today okay. <laughs> i'm really grateful to you uh because you have taken all the time put in a lot of effort behind this and why i am grateful about that and it's just not a statement for the show is when there is somebody who you know reaches out and say hey i want to do something that is going to talk about your work that really motivates me from some point in terms of okay it's not just me who is seeing a value in this there is somebody else who is also able to see it's not just our team who is seeing value in this it's somebody from outside the team who is also probably thinking in that same direction and that kind of external validation helps us to take one more step ahead uh, and over time i am i'm extremely grateful for support that has come in different forms shapes sizes in different ways like uh, there have been so many people who have put in effort in different ways like contributing their time and helping us out uh, having conversations with us um, the children who are you know continuing to be part of our program the youth coaches like i would say every single person who has been part of uh, y ultimate as well as people who have chosen not to be part of y ultimate i am grateful to all of them because everything has been a learning that would help us move forward beautiful i'm so glad to hear that and i i think you've articulated that very well a few points to our show so thanks for that <laughs> My conversation with Benoy makes me hopeful. Hopeful that we have him and his team working hard every day to empower kids, not based on academic learning purely, but by instilling the powerful values that comes with sports. Fostering the mindset of spirit, tolerance, reflection, feedback. Now just imagine if we had more kids interested in the sport of ultimate. More kids wanting to develop themselves through sports. What kind of world would that look like? A more tolerant, self-aware, respectful. All right. That's all from us for today. We hope you found this episode insightful and it has left you with some burning questions. If the answer is yes, head on to Y Ultimate's Facebook and Instagram channel to connect with their team. or shoot us your questions feedback or thoughts or just come say hello via email twitter or facebook all links are in your episode notes and we love getting mail don't forget to subscribe to this show on your podcast platform of choice and share it with your friends and family to grow a community of change partners till then stay safe and have a good think about what you are grateful for today <laughs>